Okay, Narissa, let's hear about this patient that you've been seeing. So we have Jonathan, who is a 24-year-old male, African-American male, who presented to the ED last night with bilateral pain in both knees. He has a history of sickle cell disease. Um, he said that the pain started two days ago while he was working the night shift and has gradually gotten worse. Um, the pain is an 8 out of 10 and has not been relieved with his Percocet. It is also worse upon standing and walking. Um, he reports chills, uh, mild shortness of breath, but he does deny having a fever, um, any chest pain, nausea, vomiting, and abdominal pain. Um, his past medical history does include um, a history of stuttering priapism and lower extremity ulcers. Uh, he also had his last pain crisis about a year ago. Um, he also lives with his mom and four siblings, two of which also have sickle cell disease. Um, he doesn't smoke, he doesn't do any drugs, but he does drink alcohol socially and the last time was last weekend. Um, his review of systems was unremarkable except for some intermittent left hand pain. Uh, his vitals were also normal except for an elevated heart rate and his O2 sats were actually pretty low at 89%. What was the heart rate elevated at? At 98. Okay. Yes. Okay. Sorry, at, one, at 120. It was at 120. Okay, that, was that would fit with pain. Yes. Think of that. Okay, okay. so yeah, his heart rate was at 120. Okay. Um, his O2 stats were also at 89%, uh, but that's normal for him, for his history. So, um, on physical exam, he was lying in his bed uh, in obvious discomfort. He also appeared thin, but his heart sounds were normal, uh, no murmurs. His lungs were clear to auscultation and percussion. Um, he did have a scaly rash on his flex the flexor side of his elbow. Uh, his testes were normal, no priapisms noted. Um, and then his right knee had mild swelling um, and a small effusion, but no erythema. Uh, it was non-tender to palpation, but upon full extension, there was some tenderness. Uh, his left knee, there was no swelling, no tenderness noted, and both knees had full range of motion. So what, are you, what else are you going to do at this point? Well, um, at this point for the assessment, is that what, is that what you yeah. mean, the assessment? What, remember how we talked about you, Carrie, when, what's the next step? Is you, you want to decide what you need to do to yes. finalize your diagnosis? What else, additional tests, things like that? Right, want? so we did order the CBC. Okay. Um, and we decided we didn't need to take an Esther x-ray because they're usually not really conclusive and don't really show much good choice um, so again for his assessment we did we have this 24 year old male who has a history of sickle cell disease um, and so the differentials could include vaso occlusive disease periarticular infarct septic arthritis or gout um, because he's afebrile the vaso occlusive disease or the periarticular infarct are more likely than not um, so how are we going to treat him we are going to give him NSAIDs for the pain is what I would think um, and then morphine for any breakout pain. Uh, if his CBC comes back with any marked leukocytosis or if he does develop a fever, we can order blood cultures uh, and start him on antibiotics empirically for staph and salmonella. Uh, for the sickle cell, we could give, uh, we could monitor him, we should monitor him for acute chest syndrome, uh, splenic infarct and, sorry, aplastic crisis and splenic sequestration. Okay. Um, and then, we can monitor his O2 sats, and if he becomes symptomatic, also administer that. Would you give him fluids and oxygen now, or are you going to wait? We, well, we sh might as well, since his O2 sats are pretty low at 89%, so it wouldn't be a bad idea to start him on any on oxygen. Why Why would this be, would not be vaso-occlusive disease? It's like a little bit of vaso yeah, You said he had some ulcers in the past, mm -hmm. but he doesn't have them now. Okay. What does that tell you about his vascular system? He can heal. Yes. Okay. Okay, so vaso-occlusive disease or necrosis, where would that occur when you think of bones? Where's the easiest place? Your hip. Hip. Because remember, there's one artery serving that. How many arteries are serving the knees? Many. Okay. It would be hard <coughs> to occlude that. Right. See, that's, that's part of the way. Okay. So see, that's mm -hmm. part of the way I want you to take your anatomy and bring that in as you're thinking and talking about it. Now, gout, what would you expect to see with gout? Well, a podagra on your big toe. Yeah. It so can he curve in other joints. There. But it's what usually happens with gout. 
Remember you in could. a joint, very hot, swollen. So it will be swollen. Mm -hmm. Yes, and red. And it so doesn't that, have. that kind of, that takes that out. Plus, it's highly unusual in a large joint. I mean, you can see it in ankle and the, the, the toe. You might see it in fingers. But usually the larger joints you don't mm -hmm. have with that or something. Um, one of the things you've given a history of sickle cell, and let's a little bit let's talk a little bit about sickle cell disease. What does that mean when you say disease versus trait? Well, with the disease, he actually so both I guess both his parents had to have had it um, with a trait. Only his mother or his father would have had it. Usually, trait is asymptomatic, um, generally. Yeah. Um, so because he has a disease, he got it from they both They generally time. can't sickle that significant yes. cells are very mild, whereas with the disease, they are. And you know what a peripheral smear would look like on this. Describe a peripheral smear. The, the cells would be sickle-shaped. Yeah, that's where it gets its name. Mm -hmm. And what occurs with that is it flows. Why the priapism that you see? So with the priapism, basically it's a prolonged erection, and so with the sickling, it kind of blocks the blood from being able to flow in and out properly. So that's why it's a stuttering priapism. Sometimes it comes, sometimes it goes, just because it gets stuck, per se. Stuttering because it can be there and kind of resolve on its own. And the sickling of the cells sludges, so it's difficult to pass through the, you remember your anatomy, and the corpus spongiosum, the, I mean the corpus cavernosum, and the spongious areas, they'll poorly flow. They usually will reverse. Uh, if you don't, you have to do find your friendly urologist and he'll teach you how to take care of those things. Um, but I think you've got a good understanding of that. The fact that he doesn't have one now tells us he's probably not in a significant cyc uh, uh, cycling problem uh, with, with the sickle cells crushing. It, the one thing I would suggest in there is probably go ahead and use the oxygen and the fluids because that helps oxygenating helps increase the oxygen level so they function better, the fluids keeps them from getting as acidotic so they won't sickle as much. We're worried that there may be a component of sickle cell inflammation or changes with this that minimizes that it can help. So what are you going to do over the next few days to see where he goes? Um, we'll, we'll definitely monitor him for all the things that could happen because of his sickle cell. Um, Sounds good. I think you did a very good presentation at this point. You were succinct in your areas, and for what we want now, this is the way I want you to do it. You're covering a lot of detail. Now, in the months ahead, as we go on rounds of other things, you'll learn how to compress that down to where it's a more succinct thing, because we'll already know about the patient. Right. But overall, very good, Nervous. Thank very you. Good.